Okay, so this is our first video blog ever from BTR. Um, we're going to start with this 2011 Genesis Group 2.0 that came to us. Uh, let me start over here. Let me bring you over here to the original engine that was in the car when it was brought to us. You take a look. You see that hole? Just a big hole in the engine block. So the customer was basically having fun with the new upgraded turbo he had just installed not too long ago. Um, and then the engine just ended up throwing bits and pieces down into the ground after a while. Um, basically, when we took the engine out of the car and started inspecting everything, we found out exactly what happened uh, without even having to tear into the engine because if you look at this, this is a vacuum line that is dry rotted and broken and also you can see when I put it together like this there was heat right there where the heat actually made this crack happen now this is a line that used to go to the wastegate from the boost controller solenoid now OEM boost solenoid basically what it does is it will read the boost coming off of your turbo it will decipher how many PSI it's running and basically when it gets to a target boost level, it will send a signal to the wastegate through this, hopefully unbroken vacuum line, uh, which basically pulls the wastegate open and keeps the boost level the way it wants, to, the where it wants to be. Um, but obviously with this being broken, you're gonna see full boost and your wastegate will remain closed the whole time, even though your boost controller is doing everything in its power to basically open it and control boost because wastegate certainly isn't getting the signal. So he ended up blowing his engine and now we've actually swapped in a BK2 2.0 turbo engine from a 2014 model, reinstalled all of his turbo and his manifold and all the lines. Basically I reroute it so nothing is in the way of heat. Nothing is going to lay into the manifold and melt. Um, everything should remain functional from now on for a while, very long time. Um, while doing this, I know the customer never actually had any type of boost gauge or any way of monitoring the overboost. So we actually ended up doing a GFB GeForce electronic boost controller install for him. So now let me take you over to the inside of the car. Let me get in here real quick. All right, now everything looks, you know, pretty cool. You know, it has the nice uh, grip royal steering wheel that the customer had installed. But what we're here to look at today is this little GFB boost controller that you see down there. Now the GFB boost controller has been configured by us right now so that it lights up white and blue. Now, so if you wait, so the boost controller now matches the rest of the interior so it's not an eyesore. Um, it is also in plain view so this is me actually holding the camera at my eye level while I'm sitting back on the seat. So you're able to monitor boost fully while you're driving, it's within your view but it's not obstructing anything. All right, on top of that, what this does is, let me go through the menus here. This is actually overboost. So you could actually set your overboost PSI. And let's say for this one, we'll set it at 21. Now when you set it at 21, what it does is when it hits 21 PSI, it'll open the wastegate for you. So if your target boost that you want to run your car at is around 19 to 20 PSI and you want to make sure you're safe, you want to set that up to about 1 to 2 PSI higher and it will make sure that your car doesn't overboost and basically have a catastrophic failure like this car did.
here is the Dynagraph. Um, at only 18 PSI, this car is putting down 321 horsepower, 268 wheel torque. Um, AFR is right around 11.5, so nice and safe. Um, at the same time, um, the car is only running 18 PSI, like I said, on a BK2 engine, so this thing will most likely run forever. Um, the car is also um, running a GT28 turbo setup from um, ATP Turbo. So it's a very small turbo that you could slap on, have fun, almost have no lag whatsoever. As you can see, the turbo, if you look at the, uh, the graph right here, it's a consistent pull. Um, so there's really, you, you feel almost no lag while you're driving and you know you have power all the way to the top like this. So it's a great turbo, uh, especially for the customer because he does a lot of drifting and he wants power literally anywhere under the curve. Um, this will basically give him power everywhere and anywhere he wants it. So um, obviously not the right size turbo for those people looking for high horsepower, but more of a, it's a good turbo for someone that's looking for more of like that V6 power band out of a four cylinder. All right, so that concludes this week's um, video blog for us. It is our first one, so it might not be that good. <laughs> But we'll try to bring you some new knowledge, um, new news, some tips and things like that uh, where you can actually learn about what you can do to make sure your car runs safely and you know to be able to enjoy your car fully for years to come. Um, like this week, our lesson was check your vacuum lines, make sure nothing is close to the heat and nothing's going to blow up on you at the end by not giving the right signal to the wastegate. So um, next week, we're actually going to touch base on our two SEMA bills from this past SEMA. So uh, the Focus you see here, the BTR Edition Focus ST, and the BTR Edition Elantra Sport in the background there. Um, both will be going through, or already have gone through, a few little changes while it's getting ready to be shown off at the Chicago Auto Show coming up in, I believe, the second week of February. So. If you're in the area, definitely stop by, check these out. The Elantra will be part of the Hyundai USA booth, as well as the Ford Focus being part of the Ford Motor Company booth. So, all right, join us next time. Thank you for watching our first video blog.